Good morning everyone, once again here from Taipei in Taiwan. We're just about to go all the way down south to a city called Kaohsiung. And if we were to go there by car, it would take four hours overall. But we're gonna get on the bullet train there, which is gonna be our first time ever on a bullet train. And it's only gonna take about an hour and a half. So excited to finally see how traveling on a bullet train is. And you got a good deal on this ticket, didn't you? Yes, because uh, I, I don't know why, but I found a website called Kluk and they had this uh, promotion where foreigners have a discount on the train only foreigners, I don't know why Th uh, Taiwanese people are not included and we got the ticket for two people for uh, 80 dollars 80 US dollars Is that each or for both? No, for both and I think if we bought the ticket on the train website it would be 97 US dollars so oh, so saved quite yeah, a lot we saved uh, a lot of money so we're just gonna head to the ticket office now to get the physical ticket. We have to show our passport too, probably to prove that we're foreigners, right? Since the offer is for foreigners. So this is how the station looks on the inside. Nice big modern station. And all around are places to eat, all around both sides, so loads of options. You also get the big chains like Starbucks, stuff like that. I guess you can eat up there as well. Yeah, so from here you have everything. You have the metro right here, the bus station, TRA, which is just the normal trains. And we're going to be heading there, HSR, High Speed Railway, is that what it's called? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I think that's what it stands for. gonna be our train here at 131 so that's the destination Zhuo Ying and they have a sign here showing all the other stations that it passes so it goes through the entire country in just one and a half hours definitely convenient so here's one of the other bullet trains arriving this is an hours I think it's going to the same place all right now it's leaving I doubt it goes that fast from the station, but who knows. Oh no, it's going pretty fast actually already. Whoa. <laughs> it's actually going super rapid already. Yeah, normal trains definitely don't leave that quick. So this is gonna be us. We're actually right at the front, number one. This is how it looks on the inside. Luckily we're on a side where it's only two seats, so we don't have to sit with anyone. On the other side it's three seats. Loads of legroom, look at this. This is great. Yeah, and this is just like a standard class. Yeah, they also have business class or this one. They are only two options. Oh, okay. Yeah, but this one we're only here for an hour, so yeah, it's fine with all this space. And yeah, I guess just like a plane, right? Get your little tray. I don't know if they serve food and drinks or anything. And you can put your bags up there. So ours are up here. Little hanger here too. I guess hanger coat or something. I guess these you can pull down if you want. But I want the scenery. So they even have free Wi-Fi here. An open network. So you can connect to that if you want. It does come outside, so we're just whizzing by everything right now. You read that this goes at what speed? Uh, up to 300 kilometers per hour. Really? Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> you don't feel it at all, right? No, it's super smooth. Yeah, no, no rock 
walking or anything. It's also very quiet, as you can see. Barely any noise at all. Yeah, so you can buy some snacks and drinks if you want. Nothing healthy, I don't think, though, as usual on public transport. Lots of options. so crazy that you can cross the entire country in just an hour and 30 minutes though yeah i think the locals are used to it but for us it's something very very cool and amazing and different <laughs> yeah for us to go that kind of distance is just a plane yeah i was just uh, like looking on google maps and every five minutes we were just like far away and um, like i said it was just changing the scenery and the, even the weather and stuff like in the place it was rainy and then five minutes later it was sunny yeah, it was crazy. moving really uh -huh. quickly. And there's actually no planes from Taipei to here. So I think it is because they have the bullet train. But it's like, what's the point, right? Yeah, so no, I think that's no, why. There's no direct plane, but you can go by plane, but no direct plane. And I think it's just easy to go by bullet train. Yeah, so everybody does it. So we've just checked into our Airbnb. We ended up just getting a Uber from the station about 20 minutes. It's a really nice apartment here. We're on the 13th floor. This is 70 US dollars. So really nice living room area. Got a pretty nice big kitchen here. If you saw our room in Taipei, it wasn't the best for uh, cooking. We didn't really have a proper kitchen there, but yeah, now we've got a real kitchen and a microwave, so can heat things up and then we've also got a washing machine here and I guess we can hang our clothes out here and then this is our bedroom just a little bedroom looks like got some nice views here see the river back there and I haven't even seen the bathroom yet yeah also nice and modern that was like a modern toilet electric or something and we have this little balcony area right here. Oh, that looks like a, a baseball ground back there. Didn't know they played baseball around here. And we've got the little dining table, but we also have a big outside area here. They provided these slippers for us. So look at the size of this. This is just for our room. It is really windy at the moment, especially because we're on the top floor. 
They get some nice views from up here too. Yeah, so that's the big river going through the middle. Loads of high-rise buildings everywhere by the looks of it. I haven't seen many pictures or anything from this place, Kaohsiung, so first time seeing it properly. Looks pretty nice. And check that out, completely clear skies. So I think here in the south of Taiwan, it's a lot clearer overall than the north, which was kind of cloudy all the time. Yeah, zero clouds. Got some mountains and hills back there. I think you can do some hiking around here. So yeah, we might do that at some point. So we've now come to a popular area called the Lotus Pond. It is a weekday and it already looks pretty busy here. A lot of people around. And check this out, the Uber just dropped us off here. Already some awesome sights. These two impressive pagodas. And it looks like you enter the dragon and the tiger's mouth to go inside. Some other things over there as well, isn't there? Yeah, it's another temple. I think there are quite a few temples around this pond. We're gonna be checking them out soon. Yeah, I think a lot of them are on the water like this one too, so that's nice. So that's what Carol was talking about before, there's other temples here on piers. You can see a bunch of them one after the other. There's actually people wakeboarding here. There's like a wakeboard part, some ramps. Yeah, that, that looks cool. <laughs> yeah, it's not with a boat, I think, um, I think there's like wires that take you around. Yeah, that looks really cool. Yeah, there are certainly some epic temples around here. That's another one back there, a huge red one. Looks really impressive. So it's not only on the water on this side, but even this, look at all this, all colorful. Want to go in this red one since it's so big? Yeah, it looks amazing. Yeah, it really does. Really liking what we've seen from this city already. The Uber driving here and, and the area that we're staying in, it just looks really nice. Everything looks kind of new. This is one cool entrance. We don't know what the name of this temple is since we weren't planning on coming in here. Really colorful. So pretty much all the Taoist temples that we've been to in Taiwan and in Southeast Asia kind of look similar inside. They use the same colors, like the reds, the dark greens, gold. They all seem to have that kind of color scheme. Lots and lots of art though. Pretty much every everything is art. Oh, I just noticed, looking back at the pier now, there's yet another dragon back there. Incense smells great once again. So they always have the incense sticks at the Taoist temples. They seem to pray with them as well, inside.
So in other regions of Taiwan, we had the cherry blossoms. Here we have these yellow ones, yellow trees. I think we saw this once in Sayulita in Mexico. I don't know if it was the same one, but it was also bright yellow. Not something that you see every day. <laughs> so I've mentioned quite a few times over the recent videos about the warrior statues that they have. This is obviously the most impressive one that we've seen so far. It's huge. So does anyone know who that is? Is it like uh, folklore or is it someone that existed in real life? It looks like a, a human body. So yeah, I don't know if that's someone that did exist. Let me know in the comment section. I think this will be our last temple for this video anyway so we've come to a Confucian temple we really love the gates that they always have at the beginning of the temples the huge gateways really cool the majority are like that we didn't even know there was so many temples around the pond we knew there was a few but there's way more than what we thought so once again it looks really cool inside and different to other ones that we've seen massive courtyard area and yeah that's the main temple in the middle i like the walkways around the outside though golden dragons everywhere so we had heard of confucius before the famous chinese philosopher but i don't think we'd ever been in a dedicated temple to confucianism before this might be the first one there was a sign back there saying that he was born around 500 BC and I didn't know that he was actually part of the government at one point. He worked for the government but then I think he spent his later life just teaching his philosophies in different states around China. And I had read in the past that a lot of the Chinese and probably Taiwanese follow three different philosophies. So Confucianism, Taoism and Buddhism. Some people say like Buddhism is a religion, other people say it's just a philosophy, a way of life and yeah, just like the other two. So it is very different to the Taoist temples inside. There's no sculptures of uh, people or those warriors or anything. Here they just have the texts, which I guess is yeah one of the teachings of Confucius. So I'm not sure if all Confucius uh, temples are like that. The designs look quite similar though, and uh, the colors similar to the Taoist temples. get on one of these bikes now apparently you can use the easy card we haven't got on one yet but it'll be nice to ride around the lake on one of these make sure the the tires are good tap the IC card is that this so we had to register it then to use the bikes I don't know that's what it's saying right <laughs> that is the sound of failure right there. Alright, so we got the bike. The card didn't work because I guess we had to register it somewhere. So we just downloaded the app on our phones, put our credit card info in, 
and then yeah all, all we had to do was just put in a code in the app and we got the bike so yeah, it wasn't too bad i don't know how much it is though it charges your card like 93 euros but that's just in case you don't put the bike back right so i guess they'll give that back later on it's got a good cycle pathway though around the lake so nice place for a bike ride So we've stopped at that area with the wake park. Now we'll be able to see the wake borders from closer. Yeah, that looks like a lot of fun. Maybe if we had known about it before, we would have given it a go. Looks pretty exciting. It's actually our first time seeing a park like that. Whoa, backflip. Yeah, some of these guys definitely know what they're doing. What's he gonna do now? Whoa, nailed it. So we were just looking for a place to eat and we saw this old wall here. Apparently it's the old city walls. So I think we're gonna go there first because it's about to get dark soon. So it definitely looks like it's been renovated. This part looks quite modern. So that's what the city was called, Fengshan City. This is the North Gate. So I guess there's other gates around here. So I guess the city is within here. The old city. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah, we were outside it, I think. Yeah, there's not much to see, really. You just walk along the wall and that's about it. It already ends here. Oh, that's a cool place over there. Another temple, maybe. So I guess the wall would have just continued around here. And this would have been the old city within. Even the buildings that are here now look a bit older. Obviously not ancient buildings, but not as modern as the buildings on the outside of the walls. found a local spot to eat at here. Carol's just getting some soup that's included. What kind of soup is that anyway? Just clear soup with some veggies. Okay. Yeah, so basically at the front there, they just had a bunch of options. You just grab what you want. And we got all this, this was 270. So the soup is for free. You can also get black tea included for free as much as you want. What have you got there? Is that like the edamame soybean thing? Yeah, and fish and veggies and rice. Rice. I just went all out meat. So chicken, fish and some sausages. So we're gonna be heading out now. Gonna get a Uber soon. Just gotta drink this first. Once again we got bubble tea. There was a bubble tea place right next to where we ate called Tea Top. So I got a green tea with the pearl balls, the tapioca balls. And you just got the original one. Yeah. <laughs> Milk pearl tea. So that was a uh, hundred overall. So we plan on making one more video in this area of Kaohsiung. There's still a lot more to see. So that'll be the next one coming up. If you like this one, just drop a like as usual to support us. Subscribe to see more videos like this. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And we'll see you in the next one.